Hello. I can see people coming in. Leave a comment and let me know you can hear me all right and all that monarchy. And then I will... Uh... But uh, oh, it looks like people coming in. Looks like I can hear. Yeah, all oh, sounding good. All oh, sounding good. There we go. I'm seeing. Chris. Hopefully you can hear me. Hopefully all is good. Hopefully all is good in your world. And uh, I've, I've, if you're uh, a bit of a, seen me a few times on live streams, I've tried changing it up. I have a microphone, and hopefully the guitar is like sounding better uh, than normal, and it's not the kind of watery kind of sound. Um, Oh, right, let's see what's going on there. Welcome, everyone. Oh, BV Ninja. Thank you, mate. Again, man, you're a machine, I tell you. Um, sounding sweet, Saturday morning. Big up, wicked. Hello, psychedelic. Hello, people joining in. Um, also, if you do not know, I'm here from Strat Talk. Hey, nice, man. Oh, excellent. Well, this is, you know, a Strat, but it, it, it doesn't say Fender. <laughs> no! Um... I do have, I'm, I've joined the cult of Black Friday. And if you go on my website, I have done some Black Friday deals. And it's 30% off everything. All you've got to do is use the, uh, the promo code BLACK30. I know, I've been original here. BLACK30, if you go on my website and everything, you can get lessons which are not on YouTube or anything like that. Uh, you can get some t-shirts, you can get CDs, all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's thirty percent off everything. So just go on there. The link is in the description box below. Um, Black thirty is the code, and it is until Sunday, I believe. Yeah, Monday morning, Sunday kind of thing. So the whole weekend. But uh, I thought I'd come on and talk a little bit about guitar practice and kind of cool things you can do. Um, so I'm just seeing some comments here at the same time. Uh, some cool things you can do to kind of help uh, with practicing the guitar. And I suppose my thoughts of things, because we are in a world now where everything is at our disposal. And, you know, it can, I can imagine seeing very, very overwhelming if you've been playing guitar for a couple of years. Uh, what well, someone said there, what's the best way? Let's make this bigger. Let's throw this one. What's the best way to learn chord progressions and how to incorporate into practice session? That's very good. And I was about to actually talk about something like that. So that's great. Um, but I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. <clears throat> but yeah, it can be a bit overwhelming where, you know, what do I do? You know, I might going to do 10 minutes on scales and 10 minutes on this, you know, that kind of thing. Now, if you're watching me, hopefully you're not a complete and utter beginner and that you've been playing for a little while already. And, you know, you, you know, the fundamentals, you know, you, you know, your open and bar chords, you know, and hopefully, you know, a couple of scale shapes, you know, maybe, you know, a C major scale, and then you know how to take that C major scale and incorporate that into a pentatonic, you know, thank you, BV for putting that there. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Um, and it is a bloody hard instrument. Yeah, <laughs> Chris Hansen. It's very, very hard. Um, but, you know, so let's take that C, for example. Right? So that's your C major pentatonic. And then that's your C major scale. Now, 
how I've always viewed it is that as soon as you've learned a scale, straight away you get into making music with it. Straight away, you know? So what I mean by that, there's my C. keeping my beat happening. All right. So that's another thing there is timing. It's so, so important. Keeping your timing. I've been doing a few lessons today and uh, it's, it's cropped up more than once. And I'm saying that just in case some of them are watching me. Um, but it's so, so important, you know. So now I've just got a C chord happening. You know, so if I slow that down. You know, three notes. is the big big thing there so if you take your simple c chord with our simple so i just had my dinner with our simple uh c scale and just get straight away into making music with it you know not, i'm not even worrying about other chords yet or anything like that i'm just like what can i do with a simple c chord and a c scale <laughs> See what I mean? Is this making sense here? Uh, let me see what's going on. I only can see out of one eye at the moment as I, my lens has just popped out. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, did you just say, if I'm watching you, hope I'm a complete... What? I don't know what that is. Um, okay, that's cool. Can you talk about controlled sloppiness a la SRV? Know what I mean. Uh, hello, Quentin. Nice to see you, my friend. Um, I can talk about it. Yeah. So, well, it's interesting. Um, your use of the word control sloppiness. Cause that is actually, I can see why you're thinking that. Um, I think you're talking about, you know, the kind of... that kind of stuff. I don't want to use too much overdrive in case it fits. That should be all right. A lot of times with that is is the muting. So where you know I'm playing a C note again. Key of C, why not? But I'm I'm playing that C on the third string fifth fret. And then the this, this underline of my first finger is touching the second and first strings. And then the tip of my first finger is hitting the fourth, or touching the fourth, I should say. And then my thumb is over on the sixth string, and the, I'm just making sure I don't hit the fifth. So I'm putting my focus on that third string, but hitting the other ones as well to add that percussion. You know, so Stevie kind of got it kind of from Hendrix. If you hear... Um, um, I remember hearing live at Montreal, Montreal Pop Festival, you know. You know, all that kind of stuff. And that's what's going on, you know. So you're, you're, you're muting out the other strings, but only one note is coming out. 
and then occasionally like the half <laughs> is that up the break, but it's still the same thing, you know. So the best way of describing it, if we take a power chord, I right, take D power chord, or anyone, but say D, right? So got D. Now a power chord is a two note chord. Now, if I take the third and little fingers off, I just got that now. Yeah, it's the same thing. So take this off. You know, you got a few, a few little buzzes going on, but all sense and purposes. It's that. So if I've got that, I mean, so if I go D to C. Hopefully that makes sense. I may have to excuse myself for like two minutes to put my bloody lens in so I don't have to see out of one eye. Um, but let me, um, uh, what's this say? Uh, God, I can't type it. Not looking at tab and learning by ear has really helped me. Yeah, you know, getting your, actually leave that up for a second, people. Getting your ear training up is so, so important. Um, I, I used to be, in awe of people who could um, listen to a song and just play it back. You know, my guitar teacher would say to me, oh, Mike, you know, if you want to learn a song, you know, bring a tape. This was the 90s. Bring a tape in and uh, I'll teach it to you, you know. And he would just listen to the song, like, yeah, yeah, and write it out, and then bang, it was show me. I was like, how are you doing that, you know? Um, for me, it's always been uh, listen to the bass note of something you know if you can listen to the bass and what the bass is doing you know so you know and then does it sound happy or sad you know if i've got you know so if i've established as an a minor or an a note is it, or is it that? so it's very very important right guys excuse me for two sets let me just go and sort so I can see, talk among yourselves and um, think of questions. Two seconds. And he's back in the room. Right. Sorry about that. But I didn't want to just... Sorry about I just realised I've got this on. Right. Yeah, I didn't want to do that with one eye. <laughs> I was going to try and persevere as long as possible. But anyway, so hopefully is some of this making sense. And, oh, look at that. I can see again. Um, thank you, Quinton. Um, what's that? Uh, putting his eyes balls in. <laughs> People coming up. Where's he gone? Quick, hide everyone. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll talk about it in a second. Uh, what do you... There we go. This is what we want to see. Um, what's that say? There you go. Someone say, be quiet when i oh, back. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, I need... I'm so used to... Uh, not used. Need to get used to doing this with a microphone. And I need to up my live stream stuff, you know. But um, other crazy things are happening at the moment. So I will try and be straight on. So thanks for that, BV um right what's this one here what do you practice when you don't know what to practice or just don't feel like practicing um well i'm it all depends where you are in your plane levels so what i mean by that i think it's very very important to have the foundations down 
So, you know, when I was saying earlier about a C major scale, don't start trying to play a harmonic minor scale if you don't know what a C major scale is, you know, or don't start looking at some weird jazz voicings if you, you know, are struggling doing E, A and B, you know what I mean? So it's all about getting those foundations down, you know. Um, I mean, put it this way, I didn't learn a pentatonic scale until I've been playing guitar for about two years. Um, I, I had all my major scales down first, you know, and then kind of built it up. Um, so when it came time to um, incorporating major scale notes into my pentatonic, you know, I had those down there. So get those foundations down, you know. But always, always, like if you're doing a practice session, try and always have fun with it. You know, and like I was saying at the beginning of uh, the stream, you know, once you learn a scale, start making music with it. Once you learn a chord, start making music with it. You know, so say, for example, <clears throat> you've learned a C major seven chord, you know, start using it in something, you know, C, C, C major seven. major seven where else can i play c major seven you know so that's where like the cage system which if you go to my website black friday black 30 uh, code um you can get a video actually where i'm talking about the cage system but it's basically built up on c a g e and d shapes so this is using the a shape so i'll skip out g but if i did right there you know you kind of learn other places to play any given chord and build it all that way you know but there shouldn't be a time limit like right i should i've been playing for x amount of months or years i should be on this by now you know just kind of en enjoy the ride now but hopefully that kind of helps and answers your question um see now this is it right i get this question all the time when i'm teaching people privately when people um DM me on Instagram and all that kind of stuff. People want shortcuts. And there is no shortcuts. <laughs> There's no shortcuts at all. Who's that? Sorry. Uh, Kishin. There's no shortcuts at all. You know, it's, it's literally putting the work in, you know. And I'm sorry to sound like a bossy teacher. Um, but, you know, for diatonic chord changes, you know, first of all, you want to learn your harmonized major scale. Um, I've got a lesson on that on my website as well. Look at that. Uh, but you want to learn your harmonized major scale, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, and then start making music of it straight away. You know, so a one, two, four, five in C, C major, C minor, F major, G major. And it's your rhythms to it. If you're in a, a funk band kind of thing, you might want to do a... Uh... So let's take this off so you can see. You know what I mean? So, but well, there's no shortcuts. There's no shortcuts. You just got to put the work in, you know. Uh, you talk to, you think of any great guitar player, famous or non-famous, but you know, uh, Steve Vai used to do his twelve-hour day practice sessions, didn't he? Twelve hours a day. There's no shortcuts, man. 
Um, what's this cat saying? Uh, I'm using tens, but do but been doing more and more bending. Thinking of moving to nines to make it easy. Nah, person. Uh, it's. Just, I mean, I use tens on my um, strats. I use elevens on my Gibson scale length guitars, and I use twelves on my acoustics. Actually, I had a gig. I had an actual gig yesterday um and it was quite a posh one it was like a film studio as well and it was really cool and uh doing a lot of jazz blues and some christmas stuff and stuff like that and um i was doing load of solos and um i was you know bending up tone tone and a half on a on a 12 gauge acoustic you know so it was like a 12 gauge shotgun um it you know, I think with nine, I mean, at the end of the day, if you prefer the sound of nines, but if you're already using 10, you just said, I'm using 10, but doing more and more, but your hammer just get used to it. You'll just get used to, sorry, let's take this off so you can see what I'm doing. kind of get used to it so i, w- I would stick with the tens this is it's a better tone as well i think tens to to nine if you saw um i did that kind of uh was it last week that neo soul hendrix meets mayor video i put up on youtube i'm using a telecaster and that but built by the same guy who made this uh darren horton from daniel's guitar beautiful telly and it's got 9.5s on it and for me it's just a bit skinny a little bit too skinny but i I couldn't bother to change it but um you know uh but you know billy gibbons uses sevens and sounds great but he's got a very light touch you know um this is this guitar in particular has got um, quite a big neck and you know quite big frets so for bending it's but there's a lot more tension plus it's got um five springs on the back you know so it kind of feels a bit heavier than tens, but I've been playing it so much that it just. So if you're, I would stick with the tens. You know, if after like a month or two it's still hurting or something, then go to nines. You know, but he didn't say it was hurting. So, um, <laughs> Quentin James, I had his pick. <laughs> um. Uh, what's going on here? Sorry, I've just lost where I was. Um. I'm just here. Hello there, Quentin. I hope you're very say now, Quentin. I thought you were British yourself with a, a name like that, you know. You sound like something you'll be in Downton Abbey with uh, Boris Johnson's slot. I don't know. Oh flipping egg. Yeah. It's like going mad. Um Right. Uh sorry, I'm... Quentin, you're making me laugh and I'm losing my words. <laughs> uh thank you, Patrick. Thank you very much, mate. Appreciate it. Um, now, the, the 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 sweetest man on the internet has made a very good point here. Um, so, you've learned a C major scale or some licks, right? But as I was talking about a scale, knowing where your root notes are in those shapes. So, if I've learned yeah it's starting on the c note so wherever you move that if i go to the fifth fret that's a d note i've now got d major you know so you bit by bit you get to know where your notes are on the guitar all right but uh what made me think of that in a minor pentatonic right everyone's favorite friend there's three root notes in that shape. A, A, A. Okay, three root notes. So if you can get, you no, know, if you're aware that there's an A, an A, and an A, say you want to do that in G minor. All right, so where those root notes were in that shape will be in the exact same place here. You know what I mean? So now you're getting to know there's a G there, G there, and G there do this in B flat. 
So again, bit by bit, you get to know those notes on the neck. And bada bing, bada boom. You can do all the crazy shizzle. Uh, thank you, Micon. I'd appreciate it. Oh, hello. Oh, that's, that is a name. I'm going to call you Daz. Hello, but that's amazing. Lithuania, that's incredible. Hello there. Um, yes, again, thank you, BV. Uh, if you're just joining in or, or, or missed it earlier, I'm doing a little Black Friday deal on my website. Everything is 30% off. Just use that code BLACK30. And uh, you can get 30% off all lessons on there and CDs, T-shirts, which shockingly I'm not wearing because I was wearing it the other day. Um, and you can be really cool and get all the women or men. Depends what you're into. And I think we're mainly men watching. I Hello, mate. I'm very well, thank you. Uh, a bit tired today. I'm good. I'm good. You know, there's always time for lots of uh, lots of playing. So I want to make sure there's no questions, and I will carry on. Um... Ah, hi, Paul. How you doing, buddy? Um... Oh, what's this one here? Can you suggest me an electric guitar price range two hundred dollars? I've been playing for four years now. See, when I see a question like that, I automatically think of um, when I was younger, kind of when I was playing, uh, you know, for four years or something. But there's some really good guitars now for not as much money. No. But put it this way, when I was playing for four years, a £200 guitar wouldn't be that great. But now a £200 guitar, pound guitar would be pretty good. I mean, I'll certainly check out the Black Friday deals. I know, I mean, it's, a, it's double your... Uh, budget uh if you've seen me use that d'angelico premier mini dc i think they're going for like 400 pound at the moment um i mean if you can if if it was me i would i'm suggest um, obviously you have a guitar ready if you've been playing for four years i would try and save up a little bit more uh if you can get a guitar in the 300 marks like that um try and if you can get uh, a second hand uh, Mexican strat or something like that or telly um I would personally just save up a little bit more and if it takes you another six months or so by all means you know but just try and save up a little bit more to get um you know something just a little bit more expensive which will feel better because if you're buying a guitar that cheap you're gonna get uh, and I don't mean it in a, in a horrible way but the frets would be quite sharp. It won't be necessarily a great feeling. So if you could get to about three, three fifty, you can get some cool strats. And um, I can say what else are there? Sure, goals are quite cool. Uh, I mean, I I always will love the Yamaha Pacifica guitars as well. I think they're really, really good guitars. Uh, 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 oh, okay. Uh, who is your favourite guitarist? I've got more than one man. Um, Richie Cotson. Richie Sambora, uh, Richie Sambora, like from the nineties, you know, uh, Robin Ford, Michael Landau, Tommy Emmanuel, um, Steve Ray Vaughan, uh, Dave Kilminster, uh, plus he used to teach me. So he's always been one of my favorites. Um, Larry Carton, Joe Pass. Uh, Chet Atkins. Uh, I could go on and on, you know. But, um, yeah, if I had to say my top five would be uh, Steve Avon, Richie Cotson, Michael Landau. Uh, come on, I can do two more. Um, Eric Clapton. And man, it's hard. I can. I, I, I'm not. I'll say Sam Boyer because he was my childhood hero. There you go. There's five. Um, but man, I love. Oh, so I just saw someone put Hardy Benton. Yeah, they're cool. They're all right. Um, I haven't spent much time with him. 
Um, right, let me talk a little bit more about uh, some practice ideas. Wait a minute, let's get this one in. Uh, how important has reading music been to your progress? What advantages have you seen compared to musicians that don't read music? Uh, really good question, Chris. So um, I've been intrigued, actually. Let me know how many people here read music. Uh, I'm so when I do, like I've done like master classes with people when it comes to stuff like this. And so I'm used to just, like, getting answers back. Um, but yeah, how many people actually have can read music? So when I started, I started learning from a jazz guy, a very old school guy, and uh, he would poo poo tab, you know. And uh, so I, I started reading music off the bat, and my guitar lessons would uh, consist of, you know. <laughs> You know, stuff like that, and <laughs> you know, I remember Titanic came out, and you know, and I'll be reading this. You know, now I can just hear it. Um, so I knew this part of the neck really well through reading, and the good thing with reading, you 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 get to know the notes on your neck you're not going by you know five on the second string hammer on to eight it's not got that you know it would be saying e and then a slur to g that's what it'd be saying so i think it's really really good i'm i'm, I'm glad i started off reading because it got me knowing my notes on my neck quite well and to be honest i haven't really thought about it until just then that i did reading um but I was never really great at it. <laughs> you know, I could read the notes, but reading rhythms would throw me. Um, but it's a very, very uh, handy tool uh, to have. And I can, I can obviously, re I can read notes. If someone gave me music, and it's happened a few times, I can do it, but I'm not fluent. I can't, I'd have to study it a little bit. Uh, and like I say, the rhythms have thrown me in the past as well. Um, but it does get you knowing your notes on the neck very, very well. So that is the advantage there. So it's worth kind of, you know, trying to do a little bit of reading. So then it helps you get to know the notes, you know. And then where I was going, you would then learn it as, you know, you're learning it somewhere else on the, on the guitar neck. Um, so uh, I've got, yeah, a lot of my mates who are guitar players, not all of them are great readers, actually. I've got some, I mean, I've got, you know, some pals who are ridiculous piano players and stuff like that, and MDs, and uh, they're, 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 good, they're good readers. And, um, you know, they need to be burnt. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you either get it or you don't, you know, but I, I wish I stuck at it more. Once my playing, you know, for a long time, I was, I was learning to read music and then playing the guitar, and it was all kind of like that. And then the guitar just kind of, took over and then that just kind of stayed the same and then guitar 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 and i just kept it you now the guitar took over then my ear started about to hear the melodies what i was working out and i was like i don't need no sat reading you know and uh yeah you know and then when i went to i went to music college and i remember the one class i didn't do as well in was sight reading <laughs> but i'm glad i did it but, and so, yeah, if you want to get to know your notes on the neck, sight reading is a, is a good, it's a good shout, man. Um, how do I mix up funk practice to keep it fresh? Uh, they tend to use typically non-diatonic patterns. I mean, a lot of times this one, I mean, James Brown, right? Um, who was that? Sorry, who said that? So I know his name, Ben. Hello, Ben. Um, you know, a lot of times with funk, it's, again, rhythm timing yeah so you'll just be sitting on now beat wise i'm thinking of this that's my foot tapping here yeah? Nee, 
Dave Martin bass guitar going. you're saying about the non-diatonic yeah a lot of times it's chromatic that's all they're doing they're just going back a fret it's a bit like blues you know that kind of thing. That's where chromatics come in. Uh, you might have heard that term, like there's no such thing as a bad note, you know. So as that kind of cool tension, but it's still in a key. So when I was doing that, I'm thinking of E. So then you go to the four chord, which is A. Five. So it's still in a key, but you've got those chromatic uh, notes or chords in between, just the in between notes. But I'm still thinking a one, four, five, and E is E, A, and B. Hopefully that answers your question. But uh, to practice that kind of stuff, um, you want to have a super, super right, no, loose right hand don't want that you don't want to be coming from the elbow you'll just get tendonitis you know what a lot of swordsmen get and single men <laughs> but you don't you don't want that you want that you know as if you want your right hand to be as if oh hello uh you want your right hand as if someone had passed out or something you know you want it super super loose <laughs> Super, super loose, but the practice is that super slow, but the rhythm still there, and your right hand never stops. So even if you take it back to um, something like this, my right hand is not stopping. You know, it's always going on a sixteenth note rhythm. Uh, one, two, three, four. You know, it's always going in a 16th note rhythm. You know, I first, I remember um, getting into this when I was at music college, oh God, 20 years ago, 2000. And um, I, I, I was very lucky. I had Guthrie Govan and Dave Kilminster were my teachers. And uh, I remember seeing Guthrie <clears throat> and Dave, they do this, this thing, you know, uh, which was, oh God, oh God, that. And I can remember um, walking up to Guildford, uh, Guildford train station with my mate. And we're like, how are they doing that? You know, and we'd be there going, <laughs> you know, two 16 year old boys going, ding, ding, ding. And uh, I remember getting on the train and whatnot, and, and my mate Sam would get off at Bookham, um, 20 minutes away or whatever, and I'll be on the train again for another 20 minutes or so. And I'll just sit on the train, on the chair. I don't know if you hear that, you probably can't, but on the, on the chair. And I'll just practice going, that rhythm. And I was saying it as well. But dang bang ring dang ring dang um, so that's a, that's another important thing. You want to, if you can hum the rhythm or clap a rhythm, be able to play it is so much much easier, you know. So I would, um, yeah, I just would be going, ring, ding, ring, ding, you know, you know that. 
and eventually this happened. <laughs> I didn't really do it on the guitar. It was, you know, thinking it in my head and then that actual no, practice that on a on a chair or on my hand or you know in the air. I don't even need a chord, you know. You got all that. So um that was twenty years ago and now you know it's it's getting popular again. Um but if you think of uh, was it Mr. Bright not Mr. Bright sorry, Mr. Brownstone, Guns and Roses. And uh it starts off with I won't play the whole thing so I can't remember it, but uh You know, it starts off with that. It's the same kind of idea, you know, keeping that right wrist up. You know, and then you got. You know, Steve Ray Vaughan, he would do that kind of stuff, you know. So keep that right wrist going all the time. And that will help you get your rent dang, rent dang. Um, anyway, hope that's helped. Hello to everyone joining, by the way. I see some more people coming in. Thank you for joining this crazy Friday night or Friday afternoon, Friday morning for you. And uh, be sure to head over to my web, 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 web. I'll put my teeth back in my website and you can use the code black 30. I think the beautiful BV Ninja has been popping it in and um. You can get 30% off everything on my website. Lessons, merch, CDs, all that malarkey. So um, be sure to head over there, boys and girls. Let me see what's happening on the old um, on the old uh, comments here. Uh, oh, God. Sorry, there's a few here I've missed. Sorry. Um, do rock and roll licks, please. Do rock and roll. Uh, I have been playing clean, haven't I? Um, well. See, when I think rock and roll, I think ACDC and stuff like that. Um, but that, I, I suppose you're thinking more about speed. Yeah. Um, and really, you know, well, first of all, I've just put on a little boost there so you can hear a bit better. Um, always, if you're working on technique, like picking stuff or fast stuff, um, do it clean. Don't do load of gain. I've always played cleanly, um, especially when I was younger. I didn't own an overdrive pedal until I was 17 and I started playing guitar when I was 12. <laughs> True story. Uh, so, um, yeah, always practice cleanly. You know, if you want to get your legato going, you know, doing it slowly, but clean. And when you put on gain, I apologies if this sounds crap, what I'm about to do, but... You know, it's it's there. Uh, I'll practice going. And even now, I've got a bit of overdrive on now, but it's still clean. You can hear all the notes. It's just doing it super, super slow, you know. But, you know, I've never really been a lick person um, because it doesn't always make sense, you know. If, if it's, it's playing for whatever needs to be played in that musical situation you're on there. Now, if you're going, you know, doing some heavy... Then, of course... want all that crap you know um but it's it's applying what needs to be said in that situation there you know and uh freaking contact just come out once more um so that's the thing with licks is i, I would try and play actual music as opposed to 
thinking I need this lick here, if that makes sense, you know? Instead of going away, I'm just gonna turn around and put it in. We're on a bad day of my life. I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to seem like a dick saying that, you know. But uh, and hopefully, it's not coming across like that. But um, if you just rely on licks, licks, licks all the time. But regarding technique and things like that, it's just practicing it slowly. But pr play to a beat. Try and play to an actual beat there. You know. Um, right. Good afternoon. Oh, what's that one? Uh, good afternoon. What's shaking on a bank Friday? <laughs> <laughs> um yeah uh, i just saw where was that yeah hendrix he did all that his right wrist was well no it wasn't his right wrist was it it was his left wrist his picking hand was super super loose you know like i say that montreal pop festival performance was incredible that's one of my and the tone on that was great uh, i remember um i had the hendrix documentary what came out after he died i think it came out 70 1973 and um Mick Jagger's on it, and Clapton, and Lou Reed, and Little Richard. Uh, he was a star. When I knew him, he was a star, but he had to come out of the dumpster and be poured back into the oil. So like that, he says, he made me so excited, he made my big toe, big toe shoot right out of my boot. Um, but they show on there, uh, I must be about 14 when I got that. And they show on there uh, the Bob Dylan song, Like a Rolling Stone. And I remember thinking that tone. I don't think I even knew the word tone then, but it was a fuzz, net pick up, volume roll down, you know, but I used to love those. I'm trying not to play the exact song because Hendrix Estate or Nightmare. to love love i well, still do love that sound you know but his you know his, his picking hand wrist was uh it was great uh salut Sava. um matt von hello buddy how you doing for learning new genres is it better to learn songs or take video lessons in that genre or both or neither so, um, fantastic question. And before I answer that, I'm going to have a sip of water. That's probably why my eyes have been a nightmare. I'm just dehydrated. Mm. So, I um, have always liked playing uh, different styles, always, since I was a kid. And I would, um, you know, I remember like Total Guitar Magazine at Christmas time, they would an extra CD would be like a back and track CD, you know, and I would have like AC Zep uh, style track. And then, um, I don't know, uh, I, uh, another one, like a Thin Lizzy type one. And I have like a country kind of Eagles esque one. And then there'd be like uh, another brick in the pink, which would be like a Pink Floyd back and track. You know what I mean? It'd be all these different things. And so I just would play over them. There'd be like a funky one. There'd be like some um, metal one. You know, I'm not into metal, but I would just play over those. Because, again, just my layman's way of thinking, I suppose, you know. I'd just be like, it's the same notes. It's just how you're applying yourself, you know. So, you know, when I died more into country stuff, you know, I'd listen to more country and then it would start combing my plane, you know, and then blues, you know, listen to blues guys, listen to, you no, know, listen to, you no, know, when you, uh, that kind of, sorry, you can't see my guitar, BB uh, King kind of, well, blues stuff, I'd listen to BB King, I'd listen to Albert King, Freddie King, uh, Robert Johnson, you know, and Clapton and Robin Ford and things like that to absorb that style but when i was a kid i wasn't doing that i'll just be like well i want to play i know what country guitar sounds like i've heard it it's twangy i remember thinking that it just sounds twangy so i'll try and get that twangy kind of sound and if i played 
Um, no, it'd be a, a, a sl- I remember one was in G sharp minor. I can just remember. T- it was a Pink Floyd one. You know, it'd be. I don't know, it'd be some slow thing. So I'd just be. Just let notes ring out. This is in G sharp, yeah? Which is a normal key. This was something like, you know, like that, you know. The energy level would change to match that. But if you want to learn a new genre, just listen to that genre. If you want to learn funk, what I was talking about, listen to Earth, Wind and Fire. You know, listen to Jane, listen to Jane Brown. Listen to all these funk, you know, the old funk soul guys, Sam and Dave, and they're more soul, but um you know, listen to that. So you're absorbing that style of music and then it will just start coming out of your, into your plane. That's how I've, again, I've just tried treating things in the most simplest layman's terms. Um, and I guess it's working. <laughs> I don't know. You'd, if it's not, I apologize. Um, uh, oh, Luke. Yeah. Yeah, so Tomo, he, he, his right wrist is incredible. He's got a great right wrist. He's a great guitar player, but he does, I see, you know, his funky stuff um, he does on Instagram and stuff. He's he's great. He's fantastic. Yeah, check out some Tomo stuff. He's great. Lovely guy as well. Really nice bloke. <clears throat> uh, hello, Alex. Hello, people practicing super slow. Is my, yeah, man. Yeah, you know. But then at the same time, you know, Try it's it's good to push yourself as well. Um, you know, try 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 tripping over yourself a little bit, you know, see if you can push the envelope. And it's like, okay, that's the limit I can go to. All right. Make a note of it. I used to do that, I used to make notes on a metronome. I've got up to hundred and twenty seven beats per minute doing sixteenth note today. See if I can beat it tomorrow and I wouldn't be able to. See if I can beat it the next day. Wouldn't be able to. A week later, I did it. All right, now I can do the next one. You know? But like that was my mentality as a 16-year-old, you know, when I was trying to get my speed drops up, you know. I, I was obs- I don't know obsessed, but I was really into wanting to pick fast, you know, and I'll do the, chromatic, the classic, um, sorry. But I used to change it, so I'd do, uh, if I was starting there, it'd be three, one, four, two. I, that was one of my favourites. You know, I'm going to put the... try kind of jogging and sprinting you know Cleanly. If you're again, of course it sounds better, but you can hear the mistakes. You know. Um 
vocal mic volume isn't all right. Let me turn it up a little bit. Thank you, Randy. Hopefully that's a little bit better now. Uh, so this is the first time I've done a live stream with a mic like this. So um, you're all my guinea pigs. Uh, I've been playing. Oh, that's this one. I've been playing for over 40 years. I'm 60. That's why I was thinking about. No oh, right. Sorry. This is that question. Right. I've been playing for over 40 years. Uh, I'm 60. That's why I was thinking about nines. But you can me to stay with tens. Could I play hard? See, Nick. Mate, if you've been playing for 40 years, man, yeah, stick with 10s. I wouldn't, if anything, try going up. And then when you come back down, it'll feel skinny again, you know? Um, but yeah, stick with 10s, my friend. Best of luck. <laughs> oh, God, here we, here we go. <laughs> oh, you know what? It had to happen. Someone had to bring up a question on the hair. I use Pan 10, 3 and 1. Um, by the way, hopefully the voice isn't too loud now because I haven't got headphones on and I can hear myself and my speaker. I might just knock it down one second. <clears throat> I will try and speak right on the mic. Uh, yeah, Pan 10, Pro V, 3 and 1, I think it is. It's a bit of a mess today, actually. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm glad the tradition of someone asking questions about my hair is still staying strong. Um, oh, so, so I wanted to see that bit. Uh, where, where are you directing to my knob back? It's a bit quiet first time for this moment. Yeah, thank you, mate. Yeah, yeah. I'll, um, I'll sort this out. Don't worry. I, hopefully, hopefully, it's better than normal. And I'll try and speak up as well. Let me turn up. But hopefully, as well, more importantly, the, the guitar <laughs> is sounding better as well, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, I lost exactly where I was. Uh. Again. Uh. Thank you, BV, as always, my friend. And uh. Yes, as you've been seeing, if you go on my website, mikebradleymusic.com, and use the promo code Black Thirty. Wonder where I got that idea from. You know. And um, as it's Black Friday just in case um you can get 30 percent off um everything on my website which is cool um right oh god I've, where was i i was i've missed load of stuff out right uh here we go right i'm back i'm back <laughs> this is when i need laura to be moder uh not moderating sorry doing the uh, comments for me um oh lovely to see you too brian oh hello mate yes brian how you doing lovely to see you too my friend um, when I work on technique, I turn the reverb off too, as dry as possible, so I can hear. Yeah, good for you, man. Yeah, you know, don't. There's no point cheating it, you know. Uh, no point cheating it at all. Uh, is this what's that? No, I don't know. Uh, keep the noise down in there. Other YouTubers are trying to stream. Respect the YouTube community. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Nobody puts baby in the corner. Um, uh, well, for that, you need uh, not that much gain, actually. And and Jimmy would um, he would
da 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 whatever it is, you know. But yeah, so it's, it's kind of you know very thin picks as well. But I'll just kind of take it back and pick here. <laughs> There you go. I don't know whatever that nonsense was. But thank you again for joining me on this. Little, what's up? Oh, I've been on for an hour. Look at that. An hour. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. And it's been um, some educational learning stuff. And uh, it's been a few of you sticking with us. So thanks for that. Uh, let's make this bigger. I, I watched the Les Paul and Friends show. It has a variety of blues guitars. From, yeah, great. Oh, Les Paul. What a guy. Where is that beautiful Strat Plus 96 with the gold lace pink pickups? Um, that's not here, unfortunately. Um, I took it back. Uh, it's at my dad's house now at the moment. I've got all my gear ready there uh, because I can't fill it all here. You can see a little guitar, um, Mount Guitar more going on there. What have I got? I've got um, my acoustic. My Gibson's 345, another Strat. Oh, and my Music Man Cutlass is in there. But yeah, the Strat Plus isn't there, unfortunately. But I love this. I love that guitar. But this has kind of become my new number one, I suppose. And um, loving it. Um, oh, a bit more rare stuff in there. Isn't it? And my Gibson 345 as well. That's that's under there as well. But yeah, the Strat Plus, I, yeah, that's that's been my dearest friend. Um, since I was 14. Um, yes. Yeah, I love new strings, actually. Really, really like it. <laughs> How to play speed like Mark. Again, this is, you know, uh, picking everything. Uh, well, not everything. And, and just going slowly and building it up, you know. Uh, you know what? I sorry to be that guy, but I'm gonna say I've got I've got two videos on that, and I go into deep deep discussion about it. Uh, one's on YouTube, which is for free. So let's go on my YouTube channel and type in in the search modes, and I've got a, a video talking about that, and I've got a video on my website, um, really going into modes, and because uh, it's a big it's a big subject, but I will say people overcomplicate it. So, um, but yeah, do check out them. And like I said, if you go on my website, you can get 30% off it. So uh, using the uh, the code BLACK30, um, MikeBradyMusic.com, uh, link in the description box, and the beautiful BV's been sorting it out. But I go into, I've got two, if you've seen those two videos, you should know about modes. <laughs> Trust me, and some, you know what I mean? Uh, who's just been naughty there? Um, how do I, why can I not? Um, show it there he goes um thank you mate keep playing those sweet riffs looking forward to some more original music someday in the future thank you music therapy lass that's very sweet of you mate i really appreciate it and um if you saw my kind of lockdown um acoustic live stream gigs there's a song of mine i did um called tomorrow's day <laughs> Actually, it was using the Yamaha advert I did as well, didn't I? Um, but I uh, recently, when I say recently, two weeks ago, I did a session with this uh, guy it's called LDN Features. And we, we were going to be doing a full band, but obviously with the COVID stuff, um, we couldn't really have a full band in there. So we did like a stripped acoustic thing. But we had an uh, upright bass, um, a pedal steel player who was incredible um and we did that song and a cover and we were going to release it um it's it's audio and obviously we filmed it as well so you can watch uh it was going to be released um in a week or so but we're going to hold it till january just because they want to get it lost in the christmas kind of stuff you know so it's their decision for that and i agree i think it's a really good decision so yeah early jan that would be out but i uh next year as well i want to um record the new ep for sure so thank you mate that that means thank you again thanks for the super chat as well um oh this is a good one 
and then uh, I want to wrap up soon. But oh, if, oh, wait a minute. Uh, before I get to that, do guitarists leaving headstock tuners on while playing performing drive you mad like it does me? Can I get a witness? It annoys me if it's the big one. If you got a little small one, but I think just take it off. They just don't look cool. They're super, super. I've got one here. This is a Hardy Benton one, actually. This is a Batman tuner. Um, but, you know, so if I take this off a minute, right? Imagine I'm doing a gig and then I'm there rocking it out with that on there, you know, playing the O2 or playing the Dog and Duck Pub or something. Come on now. Nah, just I, if I, t- I use this at a gig, not this, I've got a TC Electronic Poly Tune one, which is amazing, actually. But I'll pull it on, tune it, and I'll put it in my pocket. <laughs> Just take them off. Don't leave them on. So, yeah, I, I agree with you there, uh, Patrick, definitely. Uh, but this one just caught my good eye. Um, what if you hit a plateau? Um, I think it's okay to take a break, you know. Actually, I've done a video talking about this as well. Um, it's all right. Um, and it hasn't happened to me for a while, but it does happen. So, you know, try and listen to the music which got you going in the first place. You know, like some people, someone just asked about Led Zeppelin and, you know, put some Led Zeppelin on, but don't play your guitar for a bit. You know, then li- listen to and watch some other great guitar players on YouTube. You could, you know, there's, oh man, the world is your oyster. I'm watching great musicians on, on YouTube, you know. I'm not talking about, creators i'm talking about just general musicians and all around you know people from eric clapton to you know joe blogs there's there's some great players out there you know and then just use that hopefully to help boost your playing if it, but it's all right if you don't want to play guitar don't play guitar you know it's it should always be it's called playing the guitar playing music it's about having fun if you're having fun with it then then stop for a bit you know and then, and then come back to it you know but if you're if you're determined to get it going, get your technique down. Um, when someone said about uh, at the beginning of the stream, asked about shortcuts, there is no shortcuts. You know, just got to work at it. Um, <laughs> I'm just com- I know you are, mate. I'm just coming to the great idea. tips on pick size. I love the smoothness, ease of heavier picks, um, but I don't like the strumming sound ease of my picks. Um, yeah, first of all, I wasn't taking that as an insult, don't worry. Uh, I've used the same picks for just shy of 20 years, Dunlop 1.5 mil. I use it for everything. And it's just how you hit it. You know, now if you want, sometimes in a studio, a thin pick is good for acoustic. If you want that strummy kind of stuff, you know, but I'll just return it on the, on the edge. Um, but yeah, I, I, I can't, I don't like using thin picks. Uh, just to make sure I read that properly. Yeah, it's just, you know, try um, try easing back. Don't hit it too hard, you know. But sometimes you might need a little collection of picks if you're recording stuff and you want um, that thinner sound. You might have to just use the same pick. But just try and... You now, I've got used to about a, uh, you know, change my dynamics up a lot in my playing, you know. <sighs> Where is your twin from your... He's, he's hidden. He's in the basement. I only let him out now and then. If you saw my video, what went up the other day, uh, he pops up. So uh, that's the uh, this guitar uh, humbucker against a Les Paul bridge humbucker. Check it out. Um, I really like that video, actually. I-, I was happy with the sounds, and it's quite surprising. But Mike, too, does make an appearance. So, um, yeah, check it out. Right. Let me just make sure I'm not missing. Yes. Um, yeah, take it off. But yeah, it's a good little one. What's that? Thought you had the thought of making a funny cover for that, like a Batman. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Do you have any tips on how one can actually remember songs better? For example, I can play a song perfectly, but after I don't see tabs, I mean, if you get everything, just try it. It's, it's repetition, you know? I, I've got quite a good memory for remembering songs but if i don't play it after a few days they just go so i've got a hammer no hammer at home as much as possible so um if you like with anything like i was saying about the strum thing if you can hum it you're halfway there you know if you can hum the song um you're there but it's definitely repetition you know it's, it's all a muscle memory 
Uh, right, I'm gonna. What's this one? I'm gonna ask him one more question, and I'm gonna answer. Luke Harbs, any triad exercises? So, if you saw at the beginning of the stream, I was talking about C chord, C and G. So you could, you know, say for example, let's just let's get out of this. Let's use A. So I've got an A here. I've got an A here. So try and see your, your common pentatonic with your triads. So I've got that there. And I'm just linking it in. That makes sense. Very hard when people aren't in front of me. <laughs> cool guys. Uh thank you for sticking with me. Um, uh, what causes the oh sorry, people talking about itself. Um, thanks for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully it's given you some ideas and um yeah, keep me posted and how you're you're getting on with everything, you know. And like I say, the guy people asking about mode, like I say that, that mode one. Do check out uh, those videos. Uh, you might enjoy it. And as it's Black Friday, MikeBradleyMusic.com, use that promo code BLACK30, 30% off everything. Anyway, lots of love. And um, <laughs> hashtag handsome gentleman. Look who's just popped up. One of the best looking people I know, Sean Daniel. <laughs> Sean Daniel, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Are you doing good, man? Have you, you've just—I don't know if you just joined. I'm just about to finish, but lovely to see you, mate. And hopefully, I can see you again in person soon and give you a big hug and maybe a kiss. Um, but no, I hope you're all good and well. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to turn that off. There you go. And um, yeah, hopefully it's been fun. Thanks, Burn. Thank you. It means a lot. And uh, get your Christmas trees. It's happening. I've got my Christmas tree this morning. Put it up on Sunday. It's happening. I can't believe it's Christmas, man. It's it's crazy. What's that? <laughs> I can't wait. Nan 2022. That's what it's going to have to be, isn't it? God, man. Anyway. But anyway, lots of love, guys. Thanks for sticking with me. And uh, let me know any thoughts in the comment section after this. I'll, I'll certainly be checking over any if uh, people drop any. And I'll see you very, very soon. Lots of love. The awkward bit when I hit end broadcast, but BV as well. BV Ninja, thank you so much for moderating, mate. You are a beautiful soul. You really are. Anyway, hope you're good. Lots of love. 